Meg Kadu Hirschberg, author, speaker, entrepreneur. Meg Kadu Hirschberg is a highly regarded writer and motivational speaker. Meg has also been in partnership with her husband, Gary Hirschberg, on the entrepreneurial road to success in building the well-renowned yogurt company, Stonyfield Farm. It is not a stretch to say that without Meg's support in all its forms, as is well documented in the history of the company, Stonyfield Farm would not be the stellar business that it is today. Meg graduated from Brown University with a degree in comparative literature and then moved to California to work on an organic farm. For three years, she ran a science education garden for elementary school children. Her interest in organic growing led her to get a master's degree from Cornell Agriculture School, after which she was hired to manage a large organic vegetable operation in New Jersey. Meg attended the Northeast Organic Farming Association Conference in 1984, which was hosted on the Franklin Pierce campus. Gary Hirschberg gave the keynote address at the conference that year. Gary's sister Nancy recounted how she was waiting for Gary after the speech and noticed a beautiful young woman who was also waiting to speak with him. It was Meg. Franklin Pierce University is excited to have both Meg and Gary on its beautiful Ridge campus once again and is truly thrilled to have played a part in their lifelong partnership. Meg worked for a number of years at Stonyfield Farm and then wrote two yogurt cookbooks and numerous magazine and newspaper articles as a freelance author. She is currently a columnist for Inc. Magazine, writing the popular column Balancing Acts, which explores the work-life balance in an entrepreneurial setting. The column is a source of in information and inspiration with a solid dose of reality for those who are starting a new business or who are considering the prospect. The success of the column served as the impetus for Meg's recently published book, For Better or for Work, A Survival Guide for Entrepreneurs and Their Families. Written with a good sense of both wit and practicality, the book provides readers with strategies for growing a business and a family simultaneously. Meg's publications have inspired families, employees, and entrepreneurs. She has used everything she learned as the spouse of an entrepreneur as grist for valuable lessons that she shares candidly and generously with others. Stonyfield Farm grew from a small, often struggling company to a leading environmentally friendly company that is often in the spotlight. Meg allows all of us to enter the barn and the home with her to learn from all the trials and years of experience that she has weathered so well. Whereas Meg Kadu Hirschberg has shared her life story as a partner in an entrepreneurial business in order that others can gain from her experience, whereas she cares deeply about the environment and lives her life demonstrating that commitment, whereas she inspires others to wrestle with the difficult issues in balancing family and, a building, and building a business, Franklin Pierce University is proud on this, on this 18th day of May 2013 to confer upon Meg Kadu Hirschberg the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Franklin Pierce University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all honors, privileges, responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Thank you, Dr. Birch, and greetings to my fellow honorary degree recipients, Mr. Holloway, the faculty, staff, and trustees of Franklin Pierce, families, and guests. And most especially, I salute you, the almost newly minted graduates of Franklin Pierce University, class of 2013, you made it. Yes, that's where the hand. <laughs> I am truly honored to receive this degree today on what is only my second visit to the Franklin Pierce campus. Both visits have been pretty momentous. This time I'm getting my first honorary degree and last time 29 years ago, as Dr. Zertsevi mentioned, I met my husband here. Yes, this husband. <laughs> Actually, I had just finished skinny dipping in your pond so he didn't stand a chance. We were both here to attend an organic farming conference. We wound up growing a lot more than vegetables together. We grew a business <laughs> and a family and a life. All life starts from seeds, seeds of relationships, of ideas, of connections. 
They require nourishment. You never know what's going to grow and flourish unless you give it some oxygen and some fertilizer. I took one look at Gary. He was pretty cute back then, and he's still pretty cute. And I knew that he would be my life's perennial. Sorry. <laughs> when I moved up from New Jersey to live with Gary at Stonyfield Farm in New Hampshire, the company was a small, weak, failing seedling. Life at the farm was pretty tough. It was noisy, chaotic, crowded with employees, and the farmhouse we lived in was dirty, freezing, and spooky. When I went to do laundry in our dark, dirt floor basement, unidentified furry creatures would skitter across my slippered feet. I'm not lying about this. I never did figure out what they were. The business was equally dark and depressing. It remained unprofitable for the next nine years. I was filled with doubt. The whole effort seemed mad. I got to the point where I wanted to uproot that seedling and compost it and start with a completely different crop. But watching Gary will the company into profitability taught me something important and not just about business. I learned that it's critical to be entrepreneurial about your life, whether or not you own a company. What do I mean by that? I mean that no matter what you do, living an extraordinary life requires leadership, imagination, problem solving, grit, resilience, optimism, and a never say die attitude. That is what it takes to will anything great into existence. That is what it takes to create something out of almost nothing. Not a natural entrepreneur myself, I took that lesson to heart, and after my three kids were all in school, I decided to refashion my life and become a writer. I'd always loved to write and been pretty good at it. I started sending queries to magazines and was rejected everywhere. So at age 45, I enrolled in a nonfiction course, writing course at Boston University. I handed in my first assignment at the beginning of our second session and squirmed with humiliation as my professor mercilessly took my paper apart and with it my ego in front of the whole class line by line. On the drive back to New Hampshire, I did what one does in these circumstances. I called mom. This is good, she said. Now you're really ready to learn. I wrote and rewrote that essay and it wound up becoming the first piece that I would ever sell to a magazine. It launched my career as a freelancer. For the last five years, I've been writing a regular column for a national business magazine and last year put out my first book. I have loved my work. So I want to conclude by talking about love, especially since I found my love right here on this campus. In the midst of your confusion and self-doubt about what's next in your life, you will hear some people counsel you to do what you love. The cynic inside you will say, sure, but what about my college loans? What about my rent? Doing what you love, you feel with certainty, is an impossible luxury. But if you want to live an extraordinary life, you need to start with a dream, a mission, a passion about your life and your work. Passion not only about what you want to do, but the kind of person you want to be. Like it or not, you will be entrepreneurs building a critical business, the enterprise known as your life. Passion will help direct your energy and help you to endure the inevitable failures. Gary and I sure didn't love those years at the farm. <laughs> we had plenty of failures along the way, personal and professional. But we were always able to refocus our energy because we knew what we were passionate about, each other, our causes, the life we aspired to live. We cultivated what we cared about. So have faith that whatever you choose to water in life will grow. Congratulations, graduates, and good luck. <laughs>